Today is the 17th Sunday of the year. Our Gospel is taken from John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. It's the story of the loaves and the fishes. It also invites a meditation on vulnerability. The vulnerability that is part of being human. Jesus says of the people who followed him that they're actually following him at this stage because they've seen him perform miracles, signs that show he has power. They're interested in the power, not the sign as such. The sign is a sign that he is the enfleshing of God's love. The power is the indicator that he can control some things. That attracts the people. I suggest to you that it is attractive to all of us because of our vulnerability. We like the idea of control. We do not like the idea of being vulnerable. Jesus needs to educate them, teach them, bring them beyond this reaction to vulnerability to a response that is invited already in the Exodus event. Let us go back to Exodus chapter 16, where the people are out in the desert, the wilderness, and God invites Moses to gather them together and tell them that God is to feed them manna. Here is the text. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough bread for the day. That is a very important part of it. Enough bread. Not a whole lot of extra which will be stored just in case God is not going to be there to feed us tomorrow. This is an experience of trust, of belief in God. This is one of Jesus' objections, if you like, concerns. In John's Gospel, the verb believe appears more than a hundred times. Pistuo. It's always a verb. And this, I suggest, goes to the heart of the Jesus story as John tells it. It's about belief in him. Not the things that he does, the miracles. They are signs that point to him and invite us to connect with him, to relate with him, to form an intimacy with him. They are being misread by the people as invitations to a power game. That's not what Jesus is on about. At the heart of it is how we deal with our vulnerability. Vulnerability can be an experience which prompts us to trust, to form an intimate relationship with God. So we come back to the Exodus text. In that way, Moses tells the people, passing on the words of God, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Now, this is about the God of the covenant. This is about developing the relationship with that God of the covenant. Learning to trust. Learning to deal with the experience of vulnerability in a way that leads into greater intimacy rather than into self-focus. Chapter 16 of Exodus goes on, suggests that it's precisely the latter that captures the imagination and the movement of the people. Moses said to them, gather as much of it as you need. Again, the enough. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it, those who gathered much had nothing over. Those who gathered less had enough. They gathered as much as each of them needed. And Moses said to them, let no one leave any of it until morning. Don't be saving it. Don't break the covenant of trust. However, 
they didn't listen. Some left part of it until morning. It bred worms and became foul. There is a sign. This experience of vulnerability is at the heart, the basis of our spirituality. It can be very painful to feel vulnerable, very distressing. What divine revelation is saying, what this story is saying is use it, accept it as a doorway through which we can enter, a doorway to trust, a doorway to intimacy, a doorway to experience the love that is on offer in Jesus. God always meets us where we are. I'm with you, he said. He's not saying, come over here, this is where I am, and I'll meet you here. No, God is saying, I'm with you, where you are. That's where we should meet ourselves, where we are. Part of where we are and what we are is found in our experience of vulnerability. Therefore, learning to inhabit that vulnerability is part of our becoming human. To inhabit our vulnerability is a turn of phrase that the English-Irish poet David White uses. Let me conclude this reflection by quoting from a prose poem called Vulnerability, which David White offers. The only choice we have as we mature is how we inhabit our vulnerability. How we become larger, more courageous, more compassionate through our intimacy with disappearance. Our choice is to inhabit vulnerability as generous citizens of loss. Robustly and fully or conversely as misers, complainers, reluctant and fearful. Always at the gates of existence but never bravely and completely attempting to enter. Never wanting to risk ourselves. Never walking fully through the door. What is your experience of vulnerability? How do you normally react and or respond to it? What's it like? These are important questions. They are, as it were, the heart of your spirituality. <laughs>